Hello everyone, my name is George and I'm one of the Early Years Advisory Teachers here at Walden Forest. So in this session we'll be thinking about babies at the Treasure Basket. So it's almost like a taster session of our Nurture and Thrive project we run specifically for practitioners working in the baby room and with children under two. So if you are interested in that free training, the free project we run, I'll share more details at the end of this session. So when we're thinking about babies, we're going to be exploring the uh, what the treasure basket is and how it supports babies learning and development. We're going to be considering the adult's role at the treasure basket. So is it active or a passive role? How can we be there in the moment for our babies? And um, how the treasure basket supports attachment and developing those loving, trustful relationships with the babies in our care. And, how are we sharing the message with our families to, that um, support rich, loving home environments? Then we will be thinking about how we're observing babies at the treasure basket, what we could be looking out for, tuning in um, to really notice what they're telling us and showing us through their behaviours and interaction with the treasure basket. And what do we do with that information that we've gathered? We'll be sharing tips around creating your own treasure basket and it would be great to hear about your own favourite items for the treasure basket and how you come to choose what goes in the basket. So use the chat box to share and to comment um, throughout the session and at the end of the session um, we'll be here, I'll be here to answer um, any questions that you have. So put questions in the chat box, comments, um, be great to hear from you and what you're, what you're doing in your settings at the moment. So when we are thinking about introducing treasure baskets into our setting, it's really important to think about why. What's our intent? What do we want our babies to get out of the treasure basket experience? So when we're thinking about supporting babies learning and development, we need to be considering the following. So thinking about parents and carers. So how actively involve, how do we actively involve parents and carers in their baby's learning and development. So remembering that the quality of a child's early experience is vital for their future success. And it's widely accepted that the quality of the home learning and loving environments impact positively on the child's outcomes and well-being. So working in partnerships with families is crucial, particularly at the moment during COVID times. And the quality of child's experiences in the first few years of life are both positive and negative shape how their brain development develops. So if you're keen to find out more about um, babies developing brains, then book on to our Nurture and Fry project. And then thinking about tuning in. Um, so how do we take time to stand back and really observe and reflect on what individual babies are doing in their play? What do we do with the information that we've observed? And how does this inform your provision and the experiences you're planning for your babies? and the information you're sharing with your babies. And then thinking about that freedom and open-ended experiences. So do we allow babies true freedom with resources without having an end product in mind? Are we valuing and placing our emphasis or our focus on the process rather than the outcomes of an acti activity or experience that we're offering? And then, Thinking about um, really actively tuning into babies' thinking, so what um, so that we can provide unique learning experiences for each child. So, what are their interests, their fascinations, their characteristics, the schemas that they might be showing? Um, what are they showing us through their play and their responses to the objects that we're providing and um, they're engaging with? And then are we thinking about the characteristics of effective learning when we're watching our babies? So how are they playing and exploring? What motivates them? Are they involved and concentrating? Are they having a go? Are they trying to do things their own way? Are they having their own ideas? So babies um, can spend vast amounts of time at the treasure basket, even up to an hour. So and it's, there's such a wealth of opportunities to notice, observe and unpick. And then, Thinking about schematic play, so do we have a sound understanding of children's um, child development and able to spot emerging schematic behaviours? So we know when babies are intri intrinsically motivated to learn through repeating patterns of action. So 
I'm really learning when I continually um, drop the, my spoon onto the floor from my high chair. It's great fun and my brain is growing as a result of this great game. So once we recognise a child is repeating an action, we can offer more resources to the child that, um, so they can carry on with their action using the same or different resources or and in different contexts. So watching babies at the treasure basket provides um, perfect opportunities to tune into those characteristics as emerging schemas and we can really use this information from our observations what we've noticed to inform how we're resourcing the rest of the provision and the experiences that we're providing for our babies so we're going to take a moment to think about how babies play and learn so please use the chat box to share your ideas and your knowledge as well so babies they learn in the moment and their experiences are directly affect their brain their brain development so they approach life with all senses open and all motors running and those senses so they actively use all their senses their movement their bodies and babies are really tactile, tactile so there's a real desire to touch taste feel everything and they use their bodies to explore objects so really thinking about that sucking touching banging everything goes in their mouth and also um, it's worth remembering that babies feel with their feet so how many opportunities are we providing for our babies in our in our care when they're with us to be barefoot and um, barefoot at the treasure baskets is a perfect opportunity for this to happen and it's really fun to um, see how their feet react and respond um, when they're sitting there and then our little babies they're active learners so they're prepared for active learning from birth and then curiosity is a key um, so as babies grow and develop that what is this moves very quickly to what can I do with this and that real curiosity and concentration really form the basis of all learning and creativity so babies we know are curious about everything and the world is one big open invitation to learn and curiosity is it's instinctive um, it sits in the limbic system in our oldest part of the brain so it's linked to survival so it's a real pri um, primitive evolutionary drive um, which enables us to understand the world in all, around us in order to survive. So it's a real active multi-sensory exploration of the world. And then we have interests. So we, um, we need to get to know our babies as individuals. And the key part of this is just to really sit back and watch our babies. Um, their babies are competent and independent learners. So we as practitioners don't need to be doing something with them every minute of the, um, the session with them but we do need to be present and in the moment with them. But this means that relaxing with them, observing and enjoying our babies. And then we have um, repetition. So this applies to all children, but um, when babies acquire a new skill, they're really driven to test and master that skill. So that walking up a slope or stairs or grasping something, they want to do it over, practice over and over and over again. And we know that um, new repetition really strengthens those neural connections in the brain. So by enabling opportunities for rep repetition, you're literally growing your baby's brain. And then we know that um, secure attachment is um, the importance of secure attachment. So those loving and meaningful interactions and um, that real emotional um, relationship, that professional love, that everything a practitioner does matters. So the tone of voice, the facial expressions has an impact on our babies and those responsive interactions that serve and return and um, that back and forth, you smile, I'll smile back, you babble, I babble back, um, that back and forth all support acquisition of language. However, um, we'll find out in the session that our, the adult role at the treasure baskets is more of a passive nature and it's not really a moment to start modelling language or talking with our babies on that level. So just got a question and use the chat box. So just to think about why babies play. So that urge to play, it's really instinctive and it sits in the brain, in the limbic system. So that oldest part of our brain and it's the part of the brain that we share with other mammals. So it's um, it, there's a real link between play, movement and the brain. And it's scientifically proven that play supports um, babies and children to understand the world around them and it really builds their brain so um, understanding children's behaviors those play urges those schemas will really support us to provide the right kind of environments for babies and 
um, the right resources to put in our treasure baskets. Okay, so time for a story. Once upon a time, there was a commonly held belief that babies were empty vessels born with unsophisticated brains. And then along came the neuroscientists and educationist Eleanor Goldschmid with her many um, observations um, uh, of babies over the years. So she felt that babies were demonstrating frustration and boredom with from the very limited playthings that were typically offered them. So instead of assuming that babies were grisly or teething, she suggested close adults should question what experiences and resources were being offered. Are they of interest to them? And do they support them in beginning to play and learn by themselves? So Eleanor had said that um, babies may enter the world with brains that are, appear unsophisticated, but they absorb and understand more than we realize. And babies notice, process, and follow everything adults and children do and say around them. And most of their learning occurs from their um, from their senses, and thus came um, the treasure baskets. And she's written. There's a great book called People Under Free that goes into a lot of detail about her work. So, work definitely worth reading. What is the treasure basket then? So, the um, treasure baskets they're designed to engage um, the interests and concentrations of the youngest youngest children before they're mobile. And it's a basket of carefully chosen safe objects, um, items that are not usually regarded as toys, but more from the natural and um, made man-made world. Um, generally no plastic. So the treasure basket offers a very different experience from those flashing, beeping, coloured plastic toys that are often offered to babies at this age. So try feeling the difference between um, a plastic toy and more of a, a natural man-made, um, a natural toy. So hold them in your hand, or maybe one at a time, and um, when you get the opportunity to, and then um, close your eyes and notice how it feels and how it makes you feel. How do you react and what do you start doing, um, doing with the item that you're holding? And then thinking about the objects that are designed to um, stimulate all senses. So those resources that you offer are constantly changing and evolving in response as well to what you're observing. And then the basket itself um, is round and sturdy um, with um, no handles. So flat base, round, no handles. And it's so that um, it can sit, it can be sturdy. And when the baby's leaning on it, it can't topple over and the baby can't topple over with it. So um, for those of you with um, young children and young babies out there, um, think about all those times when their baby is rummaging through your bags and clutching your bunch of keys and um, they just want to hold on to them. They don't want to let go or they're fascinated by your necklace or pendant or the button. And as they get mobile, um, those, ba those children that are rummaging through the kitchen cupboards and looking for large wooden spoons and saucepans. So, Babies, they're, they're showing a real desire to play and explore with items that were not really designed um, as toys. So what the treasure basket is not, um, it's not a basket full of miscellaneous resources collected from around the setting. Um, this can quickly become move from the treasure basket and become a rubbish basket. I mean, the items are really carefully chosen. Um, no broken, uninteresting objects or things that are too big for babies to handle. So thinking about their tiny hands. Um, and also the treasure basket is not designed, not intended for babies that are now walking. So that's where the heuristic play um, focus comes, um, sessions come into play. And that's explored a lot in our Being Two project. So if you're interested in that, um, uh, visit the hub and you will um, find lots of details on that training course. Well, the treasure basket offers so many benefits to babies. Um, use the chat box um, here, and it'd be lovely to hear what benefits um, you see when you are, if you're using the treasure baskets um, with your babies. So we know that um, the treasure basket supports the holistic development, it supports everything. It builds um, babies' confidence and decision-making skills. Um, so these are really empowering and, and important skills when learning to communicate with others as well. It develops concentration. 
and the first hand experiences. So children and babies thrive in um, on the exploratory and um, exploration and discovery, that real first hand experience. So and this really shapes their knowledge and understanding of how the world, how things work, that real active learning. And then those open ended experiences with endless possibilities. So there's no wrong way. Um, it, it's accessible to all abilities as well. And um, it's a really great way for babies to lead their own learning and make their own choices. And those open ended um, resources that they foster independence, that confidence, that making choices, that real can, um, can do attitude. So think about um, those characteristics of effective learning and how they can be applied to those. Um, so when you're offering open um, ended resources. And then that multisensory exploration um, really builds curiosity, exploration, um, just thinking all the different ways that babies interact with objects. So for their mouth, um, their, the smell and the taste. And at the um, treasure baskets, babies are really encouraged and enabled to explore and um, begin to play with their whole body. So especially using their mouth and their feet and so we talked about that a little earlier. So taking their socks off at the treasure baskets and have your babies barefoot at the, the basket. And then thinking about their spine and gross motors, that grasping, holding, banging, that reaching and letting go, the open end, the open and um, closed grasping of the hands and the fingers. And then there's all the mathematical and scientific concepts. So the capacity and shape and size, texture and weight that the babies will be off, um, exploring and experiencing. And it's a really, it can be a really sociable experience as well. So the treasure basket offers social interaction when there are two or three babies sharing the treasure basket. So when you when you offer that experience, you have observe and really look at the active interchanges, those struggles for possession, that communication through gesture, that looking, the glances, the pre-verbal noises, that touching, it's fabulous. And then, um, as we mentioned, touched on a lot, um, it builds the brain. So brain development is affected by our experiences, as we know. And the rich experience of the treasure basket brings um, babies, it really supports the um, baby's brain to sort of make those connections in their learning the experience. And um, the frequent users of the treasure basket have often observed that their babies will really root through the baskets to find their favorite objects. So they're really showing choice and preference and determination and memory as well. Um, so how does how does it all work? So babies are seated at a full treasure basket. So to begin with, babies may need a bit of supporting with um, cushions and just be watchful for those head first topples. Um, the basket needs to be full to the brim with objects that interest the individual baby to enable the baby to sort and select and we have a really good old rummage. The adult needs to be seated nearby, so you're not talking or intervening or um, interacting. So close enough to have eye contact. Um, but you may have babies that want to check in with you and offer you a smile um, and or just check that you're still there. So re offering, responding that with that smile is fine and on co eye contact. Um, but you may have babies that are so absorbed that they only notice you when they're ready to stop. And then thinking about time and space. So create a time in the day. So un it's unrushed, there's no disruptions, there's no transitions. The baby's been fed, clean and not tired. And if older children are around, create a safe space where the baby's play um, at the basket can be um, is not interrupted. And then thinking about um, the social experience, so you can have the baby there on their own, or you can have um, two or three babies, but no more than three babies at the treasure basket. And then have a designated ab adult, so a treasure basket's champion, to manage and maintain the treasure basket so that it remains a constant offer in the baby room and, and doesn't become a passing fad. So the role of the adult is vital at the treasure baskets, although it may feel very unfamiliar um, where you're not getting stuck in and really interacting with the play. So the adult becomes the facilitator. So they're responsible for the creation and maintenance of the treasure basket. So keeping clean, things clean and checking for safety and discarding those broken items. 
and also providing a safe space and time for uninterrupted exploration. Um, so also protecting um, children from those mobile children. So protect and respect the area and the space. So, and then thinking about how you would prevent bigger children stepping in, or is it okay for them to step in? And actually, when the babies are using the treasure baskets at home, it's actually quite nice for their older siblings to join in together, and it really sort of creates that loving, that lovely bond. Um, and then also filling and replenishing the basket um, with objects, items based on the baby's interests. So then the adult also becomes an observer. So they're present, they're in the moment and they're, um, they're close enough for eye contact and able to offer that reassurance when needed. Um, they sit nearby and watch what happens. But it's really important to remember um, or to note that adult talk presents a distraction to baby's concentration. So yes, give eye contact and smile if that's how you're engaged, if that's how the baby's engaging with you. But don't seek it out because um, it is it is really distracting. Um, tune into the baby's verbal and non-verbal cues and signals so you know when that they've had enough and notice. So what does their fascinated face look like? And if if the baby is just starts by um, staring at the, the basket and it's their early days at the treasure basket, refrain from um, offering those um, the objects to them, sort of waving it in their face. So Babies are really capable of initiating their own learning and exploration. So go at their pace, follow their lead, spend time um, letting them get to be get familiar and comfortable um, with the baskets before they um, then you then they'll start when they're when they're ready. So that role of the adult is to really be attentive, um, but careful not to interfere with the baby's play and um, reflect on um, what you know about the baby and what you're seeing. So what did you notice about the baby? What characteristics of effective learning were they demonstrating? Where Were there any um, emerging schemas presenting? And if so, what does this mean for the experiences you'll be planning for your baby and how you enhance the um, environment? And then um, how we're involving parents. So it'd be really lovely to hear right now how, your, um, how you involve parents in your setting. So use the chat box um, and then share what you're up to. Um, it's really important to share the treasure baskets with babies. So we know that home learning environments impact on learning, emotional well-being, and, and, and so important, particularly now in lockdown. So um, some of these things you may be able to do, maybe not, maybe not at the moment because of COVID and the rest current restrictions, but Hold workshops, perhaps you'd be holding workshops, so they're, at the moment they would be probably virtual, um, where babies can watch um, a baby or their baby at the treasure basket in the setting. Um, lend parents treasure baskets with instructions to take home, again, maybe not um, able to at the moment, but in the future. And then invite, again, maybe you're not able to do this at the moment, but thinking about the future. So inviting parents to bring in items from home for their child's um, basket. And it's really important to explain um, to our parents why some objects have been chosen and some discarded. So, for example, some um, objects might have been chemically treated, that thinking about that scented wooden fruit or painted fruit, um, they can often harm, um, contain harmful substances for babies, especially think that they put everything in their mouth. Um, you don't need to spend money on um, on, on their resources for treasure baskets. You can find these items anywhere. Charity shops, car boot sales, town shops and around the home. But choose um, objects that are meaningful for babies and families. So think about um, objects that reflect their cultural and family heritage. And what I would say, if you were going to spend any money, um, spend money on the the, the basket itself to make sure it's sturdy um, and appropriate and really, really useful um, for the for the play to happen. So we're going to meet Frankie and she is six months old, newly sitting and very new to the treasure basket. So I want you to watch how she's responding. So think about her body language, um, how many ways you notice her using the objects. In what ways is she communicating and is she communicating? And um, 
what characteristics and schemas can you see emerging and um, have a look as well if you can see in the corner her little toes her feet the way they move is rather rather sweet and it really sort of re reiterates that message that children are also experiencing um, movement and sensory um, sensations through their feet as well so bare feet at the treasure basket so use the treasure but um, use the chat box to share your observations uh, or note them, write them down on paper um, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to play the film So perhaps sweet. Um, so at one point it was almost like the pine cone and the balls were stuck to her fingers, thinking about that tiny grasping moment and like they were just dangling and um she couldn't then she let them go. But anyway, um this is a really useful exercise as it really helps you um fine tune your own observation skills. And so if this is an area that you'd really like to develop, then it's um very useful to film your babies at the treasure baskets. Um and um, as a team, watch back the film and discuss and pick together what you see and thinking about um, what you notice about the baby, their gestures, their facial expressions, um, the way they may be communicating, their interests, and are they really digging deep, looking for a specific item, or um, are they just exploring and um, picking items that just come to hand? So. When, um, so thinking about what the baby is telling you um, from your observations and what you will do next. So this will really help you thinking about your provision, your environment, your resources, the experiences and sharing with parents and how you're empowering parents to offer the um, similar experiences at home. So this um, little activity, were, and especially if you do it regularly on a regular basis, um, will really help you develop confidence and skill around talking about your babies their interests, their needs, and where they are developmentally. So, um, and also what they need to experience and why you are offering particular experiences. So really thinking about your intent and your impl implementation. So just thinking about what we noticed about Frankie's behavior at the treasure basket. Um, so thinking about how she was communicating uh, those eye contact, that she, the use of the whole body. I don't know if you could see her toes like curling up, and there was a real concentration um, 
And I don't think we saw it. The, she was she spent a long time at the treasure basket. It was too long to put on um, the presentation, but at what various points she was sort of gurgling and um, laughing. And then thinking about her interaction. So she was looking, she was touching and grasping, mouthing, um, waving the objects and banging them, just picking them up, dropping and selecting and comparing. Um, so with the with the loofah and the pine cone and um, discarding. And then the characteristics. So she was making her own choices and self-selecting and um, showing preferences. And she was having a good old rummage, especially for that shell. Um, she was highly motivated to find out about the objects through her grasping hands and um, her, her way she was mouthing and looking um, and biting, sort of putting things in her mouth. So um, real motivate and, and huge concentration. She was very happy, quite con you know content, just thinking about those um, levels of well-being. Um, she felt very natural and happy to be there, and she was really able to follow her own um, interests on her own terms. So I just want to show you the characteristics of effective learning and just, just to remind ourselves um, uh, about how, how these, these are can be quite easily applied to the babies in our setting, when, especially when out um, at the treasure basket. So there are no, um, no rules really um, to creating your own treasure baskets except really avoid plastic and make sure it's safe. So some top tips really would be um, the objects in your treasure baskets. So you should be continually changing them and new objects slowly introduced. So you don't want to have a baby using a treasure basket for six months with the same items in it. Um, but re So really observe carefully as some babies will get very upset if they can't find their favourite objects. So um, just be careful, mindful about what you're replace removing, replacing. And check for choking hazards as well. So everything in the basket will go in the baby's mouth. It's going to be um, licked, chewed, sucked and dribbled on. And then ensure that everything can be washed, wiped and disposed um, or, or disposable. So thinking at the moment in COVID as well, um, does, will babies be having their own treasure basket so they won't be having a very social experience? So they, they will keep their items to themselves. So um, just it would be great to hear what your favourite items are. So please use the, share bo um, the chat box and share your tips for creating um, treasure baskets. What are your favourite um, objects to put in your treasure baskets and why? It'd be be so lovely to be able to share these at the end of the presentation. Um, but what I did want to say is, I can't find it now, um, just thinking about, oh, here it is. Um, met so when your babies love metal whisks, they absolutely love them. Um, so just when you're choosing one of these um, and selecting it for your basket, just give it a tug, give it a pull, because the cheap ones can um, come apart quite easily. Um, so just, yeah, just to be mindful about that. So thinking about all the different sort of things, textures and scents um, and scents. So smell, for example, those lab create, make lavender bags or um, or rosemary those or clove bags. So all the different um, herbs, you can sew them up so that they don't come undone. Um, thinking about sort of the textures, so that's like, a, um, I bought this, this is a dried, um, uh, orange and then a nice soft feather um, again that was that was bought so it wasn't picked up off out of the park um, these found around the home so this was a uh, initially attended for my daughter's hamster um, I quickly took that and these were rings that we were using to, um, to create macrame baskets and actually I thought do you know what that's so smooth and really nice for the basket um, shells um, really, really nice selection of shells that you could have. Uh, just think about different te textures and how you manipulate objects. So thinking about different sponges. Um, and I mean, these are the, get these in boots or super drug pound shop, those um, washy things that you put use. Then you've got, this is um, a very glamorous sponge. So it's very um, silver and sparkly, but Babies really love the texture of this. This is this is quite a popular item, and and actually I got this on Amazon. 
And then just thinking about objects around the home. So um, a, a rolling pin, it is quite a small one. It's quite heavy, but it's, it's really nice. Got different ways for the baby to grasp. Uh, spatulas as well, off, uh, quite popular, nice to put in the mouth. Um, and little scrubbing brushes. I mean, these are all items that um, should generally have around the house. Pastry brush brushes as well, um, a real popular um, object. And then pine cones. This was a, um, an odd massage thing that I found in a charity shop and moves, these, these things move. So lots of really fun um, items that you can be um, sticking in your treasure basket. So when implementing treasure baskets in your setting or you are reflecting on your current treasure basket practice, um, it's always really good to be thinking about what's working well and what we need to develop next and why. So spend some time together as a team thinking about the resources. So do all the resources provide a wide range of textures and shapes? Do we offer enough time for our babies to take part if they choose? Um, for a length of time? And are we promoting children's independence, independence during um, the session and stepping back and remaining that silent observer? And are we carefully watching what individual babies do in their play? So when we're thinking about our babies and how we make them feel, so, um, it's always really nice to sort of put yourself in the, your baby's shoes and just sort of about, think about um, what they like, um, and quite often it's quite nice to think about what they like. Um, they, you know, they like watching when you watch me and think about what I'm doing. You know how to extend my play and learning. And when you take time to reflect on what I'm doing and how, and knowing how you can extend this, I'm providing experiences that are appropriate to my development and reflect my interests and my experiences. And when you give me time, space, opportunity to move freely and to explore. And when you recognize that everything you do helps me to learn and develop. So thinking about what you will take away from today's session. Um, in the setting and your practice, what might you implement, uh, reflect upon, what, what might you change or what might you develop? And then thinking about parents and um, how you're going to, how you can support the home environments with the information that you've um, learned today. Um, and if you are interested in sort of taking a deep dive and really getting to, um, to know, babe, think about your practice with babies and under twos, then um, check out the Nurture and Thrive uh, project that we run. And you can book onto this through Traded Services. It's free. And um, you'll find lots of information on the hub um, to sort of give you an overview of what the course is. And equally, if you're interested in two year olds um, getting a bit older, um, check out our Being Two project. And again, that you'll find information on the hub as well. So I just wanted to um, take this opportunity to say thank you. Um, and now I'm going to be here to answer in the real, in the real time, to answer questions that you might have and um, have a look at your comments in the chat box. So once again, thank you. And um, I really hope that you have a go and introduce Treasure Baskets. And, um, I, and once you do, I'm sure that you will really fall in love with that kind of practice. So thank you and bye.